Hi, you're at the home of the world's stickiest learning. My name's Darren Smith and this is George Araman. George, how are you? I'm great, Darren. Thank you. How are you today? Hey, I'm good. I'm good. I'm keen to share with our listeners about HBDI. This is the third in our series of podcasts, and I'm just going to read the title out to make sure I get it absolutely mm -hmm. right. It says, I really don't know how to manage conflict at work. Use HBDI to manage conflict at work. So that's the title of our podcast. And George has kindly allowed us to share his HBDI, Herman Brain Dominant Instrument Profile. So this is a profile. It's a bit like Myers-Briggs. It's a bit like DISC. It's a bit like Insights. The reason we favour Herman is it's lovely and simple, simple to use. And it really just has four colours. And it's a th it shows the thinking preference. So there are blue, yellow, red, green. And this shows almost the thinking preference of George's brain. So what this tells us is he likes to think in the big picture creative. He likes to think in the people feelings area. But when it comes to facts, he struggles a bit. And when it comes to form and structure and project plan, he struggles with that as well. Now, the thing to say is we can do all four colours. We can do all of this. My metaphor is that George does yellow and red in fifth gear and maybe blue and green in second gear. Spot on. <laughs> all right. So that's a really quick summary and an overview of HBDI for anyone who hasn't seen it before. George, what have I missed on there? You're new to HBDI. What have I missed that people would want to know? So, so far, like from what you mentioned, it seems great. Um, we already talked a lot in our previous podcast, like how we can overcome the, the differences and how we have like, um, I think what would be really interesting for us to delve into is with regards to conflicts. Okay. How, what is the best way to like manage conflicts from different perspectives? Okay, okay. Well, let's, let's start with conflicts hard. Now I've been okay. doing soft skills as a training provider for 20 years and I've come to one, mm -hmm. One absolute fact on conflict, it's hard. It really is. It's exhausting. It takes energy. It consumes our brain. It's those things that we lay down at night and think, oh, how did that happen? How did I get to that place? So conflict is not easy. And what I read a lot lately about is people, let's avoid conflict. We just can't. You imagine there's seven, eight billion people on the planet and all these microcosms are banging together and they're going to bang together. They're going to have conflict. They're not going to think all the same way. And, you know, that's all right. We don't it's have good to thing. agree. Yeah. Or else we'll be all robots if we're all thinking the same way. Well, we would. We would. Well, let me give you an example. So, George, what's your favorite food, favorite meal? Depends on, the, like, I would say sushi or pizza or... OK, so you love sushi. I mean, I, I happen to as well. But let's say you <laughs> love sushi and I didn't and I liked only fish and chips. That's OK. Mm -hmm. Now, we have a small conflict there. We don't have to disagree. But let's take that into the more passionate disagreements that we might have. It's still OK. It's still OK mm -hmm. that you have a different perspective to me. And maybe that's a good thing that you have a different perspective to me. Yeah. OK, so conflict is hard. Go on. I was just like, I was just wondering if you had like, in, in your years of experience as a trainer, uh, if you could give us an example of a conflict that you experienced or that you witnessed mm. um, that can maybe represent each of the, the four quadrants, um, the blue, the red, the, like I, I, either on both sides or in the same side. So for example, a red fighting a red, a yellow, a red, a yellow, and maybe like the opposite quadrants and how how things were like uh, we're actually diving deep into the practicality yeah, of things yeah. now. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Well, let me do it in two ways. First, let's do it something close to home, moving home, our house, mm -hmm. our home, where where we all go back to. So let's take these these four colors. So mm -hmm. if a blue is buying a home, well, let me ask you, they're they're the facts but fact based people. Mm -hmm. What do you think they're looking for in a home? How much does it cost? uh how much can i sell it later on what is the location prime um how, how far can is... we improve sorry go on, go on, go on. <laughs> uh, yeah like basically everything that's factory like how many square meters is the apartment do we have a garden do we have a terrace do we have like yes. uh, any secret chambers <laughs> yes 
Brilliant. And it might be it's 3.1 miles to the school. That's an interesting mm-hmm. fact. Um, it costs 150 pounds to heat it per month. OK, these are all facts. And the Blues are absolutely right. They're seeking information. Yeah. Let, then let's move over to our yellows, our big picture people. What are they looking for, do you think? Actually, the, the example I just gave, so they're looking for the Harry Potter kind of uh, secret chamber, the, <laughs> the, the big ideas, the beautiful um, villa that is hidden somewhere in the wilderness or maybe in the middle of the, like something beautiful, big, inspiring, something when you wake up, you're like, whoa, this is my home. So it's more like, it's a bit close, I think, when it comes to home with reds and, ye- and yellow, but maybe the ideas is, is, is uh, bigger. Yeah, no, okay, okay. so so these guys, when they're looking for a home, they're looking for how does it sit within my life? Can I live here mm-hmm. comfortably? Um, if we're a young family, will it allow us to have another child? Um, mm-hmm. Could I knock down that wall, put that wall in and make a lovely conservatory? These are the things the yellows are looking for. So they're, they're creative, they're big picture, they're future. And then let's come to our greens, our next steps. What do you think these guys are looking for in a house? So uh, when uh, how are gonna we do the installments? When are gonna we pay the installments? Uh, how many installments can we pay? Um, how far is maybe the the, the house from the office? Um, they're, they're, you're right. They're planning their day. They're planning, planning their and commute. process and something. Yeah, like they're this. planning weekends where they've got to go and visit the in-laws. They're thinking about all those good things. Yeah. All right, fabulous. And then let's come to our reds, our feelings, people type people. What are they looking for? The feelings. I want to live by the sea. I want to live by the mountain. I want to live here. This reminds me of that. This is, oh, I'm nostalgic. I'm looking at there and those kinds of things. Brilliant, brilliant. Okay, so we understand our four quadrants and how they think. Now, let me ask you a question. Are any of them wrong? No. Of course. So what we then have is, let's say these four people were buying a house together and the blues pushing for the facts and the yellow for the creativity and you get the idea. But none of them are wrong. And what we've got to do is accept that people have different views to us. And it might be using the her model that we can then talk about each other with each other as third party. So I might say to you, George, um, I want to buy this house. I'm a yellow. You're a red. I can see why you feel that way. That's important to you. It's important mm-hmm. that it feels good because it's next to the sea. And I'm, oh, I want to knock down this room and change it into three rooms. You might say, OK, I can see that vision. Thank you for helping me. That's easy. So right. none of none of these perspectives are wrong. And mm-hmm. yet they all cause conflict. And the more conflict happens across because it's yeah. hard to understand. Yeah, this is like I, I was going to ask, like, imagine you have a feely, like a red person versus a blue person. One is going to talk about feelings, the other is going to talk about facts. Like, no, the investment is going to cost like 500,000 pounds. The other is going to like, be like, but I love this home. It makes me feel yes. nostalgic. It makes me feel. So how do you resolve that conflict? How, how can you, like, each one understands yeah. logically or in their mind, but like the, their visions are like so far apart that. <laughs> it's tough it's tough and it's not going to be easy conflict coming mm-hmm. back to what i said is hard so the first step is accepting that everyone thinks the same way we do okay, okay so i think like this i accept you feel like that or think that or think this way so that's the first part the second part is we need to be able to articulate it okay so i'm articulating that because i'm yellow i think like this i see this And that will help with the communication. Because I'm a red, I feel this. I'm going to try and expand on my feelings to help you understand it. Mm -hmm. And then wouldn't it be great if we can put all those views together and buy the house that suits them all? Or agree a way that we might problem solve it together. Well, what we're not going to do is take four coloured straws, pick one, and that's who we go with. (laughs) But we might agree that one of the first things we need to accept is that we're going to buy it in this price and our return on investment needs to be this. Mm. So what we find when groups get together is the blues are talking, the yellows are talking, the reds are all talking and they all have their perspective, which is fantastic. What about if they all put on a coloured hat? And all thought that way because we can do all four colors. So, so let's we're back to discuss the, the blue. Bono. 
Yes, we're back to Edward de Bono talking about our previous <laughs> podcast. You're right. And what it means is that the group put on the blue hat, let's all think in the facts, then let's all think in the yellow, then all in the ed, all in the yellow, all in the red. And if we can all do that, then we're not just fighting against each other. Mm-hmm. That's the idea. Love it. Love it. So conflict at work is being able to articulate what we think, Mm -hmm. HBDI enables us to do that because we can talk about ourselves and others as a third person. I understand you're agreeing, therefore you need this. And then it's also problem solving by wearing the hats together. That's how teams can work better together. Okay, and like out of curiosity, would you say like, let's say we're a firm, as a firm. So, okay, so this is like probably like team members uh, having to solve a conflict in the moment. So there's a conflict that just popped up and that that they are trying to solve. What if they can anticipate, like they can anticipate or envision the problem before it arrives? Yeah. So how can each of the four quadrants prepare before a problem arrives? Let's say, for example, um, our company at the end of the year has a debt that they need to resolve and they know about it six months or nine months ahead. They need to plan how they're going to resolve that conflict and each one you know is in in their direction no i'm the marketing department i have the ideas here no i'm the finance department you have to do that so how can they all come together i I, you're probably going to tell us yes you have to use the six thinking hats with edward de bono but is there a way where like we can prevent it before it happens yes if it makes sense there is there is you cannot make conflicts better when you're in conflicts Because we're just not going to listen to each other. We're probably not going to listen. So the way we need to make conflicts better is to sow the seeds and water them outside of conflict. Mm -hmm. What I mean by that is we need to build trust. We need to build understanding. I need to accept that you as a red have a valid feeling about this. And if I accept that all the way along because I trust you and you do good work and the other values that I have and we share them, then when it comes to conflict, it's not going to be bang. It's going to be, okay. let's see if we can listen to each other and make one and one equal three. Love it. I do like I'm I'm going to play the devil's advocate in the sense that let's say, uh, um, I don't know, you're a blue, I'm a red. Let's say um, when it comes to business. Nobody likes to be the feeling type in the sense that, let's say we all come here, okay, we use the six thinking hats and everything, we all have this thing, but at the same time, it's in general, in the, when it comes to business, we people tend to have a perspective that it's always the blues and the yellow and, and the greens. Sometimes the yellow that like are the ones that should have the final say or the solutions and everything. And the red, well, they're just like, okay, they have lots of passion. They're, they're very touchy-feely, et cetera. So it's great, but it's not very business-like. Um, okay, and I, and I can see why you'd say that. And it's probably taken me 20 years to completely understand Herman at such a deep level. I can now answer mm-hmm. that really simply. Love it. The reason most people go to a job and they chose that job, I accept some people have to work, but mostly we chose where we go and we don't like it every day, mm-hmm. but we do like it is because they like that job. They like those people. They like that work. And all of that comes from the red. Okay. We're only there because of the red. We only do the stuff we do because of the red. I'm only doing Mm. this podcast because I'm passionate about HBDI and you and I get on. It comes all Mm. from the red. And yet, maybe 10 years ago, I thought the same way. This Mm -hmm. red, we could just cut out and get rid of it. But actually, it's the whole passion, the whole reason we're here doing anything. Love it. It's a great reminder. It is. It is. And if we can water those plants, those seeds, before we get to conflict, then we can learn to share our feelings with each other, which is the red. And yes, it sounds a bit pink and fluffy, but wouldn't it be great, and particularly in the day of, uh, in this modern world of mental health, where I can say to you, which comes from the red, I really, my, my brain's not with it today. I'm just, I'm struggling. But we don't. Mm-hmm. Well, that comes from the red. Let me share my feelings, how I'm doing. And let's see if we can create a sense of a team that trusts each other. And then we can move mountains together. I have a curiosity question, curious question. So 
I don't know, like if we can categorize the four quadrants mm -hmm. in a way like the heart, the mind and everything. Uh, I think the red would be the heart. Yep. And the yellow would be the spirit. Yep. And, yes, sir. And the blue would be the brain. Yep. What about the green then? I think the, the blue and the green are, 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 yeah, it could be. They, they probably share a similar brain. <laughs> the, 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 the left brain as we know it, the blue and the green, probably are the brain. The, the yellow is the soul and the red is the heart. Maybe is how it works. Maybe. Okay. <laughs> it could be. It could be. Now let's come back to your question around understanding the different colours and conflicts. It can yeah. probably be harder. Now this is a sweeping statement. I may later retract. Mm -hmm. it can be harder for the Reds with conflict mm -hmm. because they feel it more. Yeah. Okay. It can be. Mm -hmm. Now that means that they also have to take ownership and accountability for their own thinking style. Red. Mm -hmm. Maybe they can be too passionate. Maybe they can go up very quickly and come down. But they've also can't use that as an excuse. I'm sorry, I blew my top and now I'm back. Well, <laughs> you blew your top. That was your fault. That was your responsibility. As much as it as it is for a green going, this is conflict for me. Absolutely the same face. They've got to take responsibility for that as well. Yeah. And so each colour's got to compromise and move towards understanding another color the other colors and accepting the way they are in conflict has a particular disadvantage and advantage like everything in life of course so the reds might blow up the greens just absolutely look cold they're robots yeah. the blues might be like that to some extent and the yellows say eh, who cares <laughs> yeah life is life say la vie indeed indeed uh, just out of curiosity, I have lots of curious questions today for some reason. Um, if we were to compare it with, I, I'm not sure if you're familiar with the attachment styles. No. Nope. Okay, then it's it's fine. I, I was because in attachment styles, when it comes to relationships, or like not just personal, but like any kind of relationships, like you have like the anxious attachment, you have the oh. avoidant, you have. So I was just trying to figure out like which of the which of the four relates to the four i know they don't literally blend in but like just trying to like uh, put um you're, them you're, out for it. you're trying to overlay one model on another yeah, okay exactly. so what are, what are the um different attachments you've got anxious you've got avoidance so, yes so we have anxious we have avoidant we have secure and we have a mixture of uh disorganized let's say so, okay which is a mixture of avoidant and anxious Oh, I think that would be tough in the moment for us to overlay one model on another, but it might be interesting for our readers who know the attachment model and are starting mm -hmm. to learn the HBDI that they might want to be able to do it. Maybe. Okay. Maybe. Yeah. Okay. All right. What other curious George questions do you have? <laughs> so I do have some. Um, okay. Um, okay. For some reason, I'm out of questions. Okay, well that's all right. Well, let's come back to a summary. So the part the podcast title is "I really don't know how to manage conflict to work." Use HBDI to manage conflict to work. So, if I were to do a summary, I would say you can't improve conflict when you're in it. Okay. Yes, it's a bit like stubbing your toe. You walk around the house, you stub your toe, and you think, I must move that kid's Lego. But it's only when you stub it, you think of it, all right? Mm -hmm. Now, what we've got to do is try and move the Lego when we don't stub our toe. So this has to be the watering of the plants before conflict so that we mm -hmm. build up trust, we build up teamwork, we build up you think like that, I think like this. So when we come to conflict, it's not as, it's more listening. Go. Love it. Thank you. I, uh, your your answer gave me uh, your uh, gave me a, a question. So um, how how much trust do each of the four quadrants need to have in order to be comfortable to be able to solve this conflict? Oh. Like how much would the red have to trust the blue, or how much of blue has to trust the red, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera? More yeah. or less, like a range. I know it's not going to be perfect, but just to give an idea, if like... Uh... I, I'm not sure I'm going to be able to answer that. So I'm going to try and give our viewers something might, that might help. This is the okay. trust equation. Mm -hmm. 
It's a four part equation by some bright spark who figured out that trust, which is quite gray and quite woolly, do I trust this person, is actually four distinct parts. Credibility. If you ask me about HBDI, you'd expect me to have a decent answer. I'm credible in HBDI. Reliability. If you ask me to turn up for a meeting on time, give you a report, send a PowerPoint presentation when you need it, do I? That's reliability. Mm. Intimacy is not us hugging. Intimacy is, do I know a little bit about you? Do we, you know a little bit about me? I know that you like sushi. And it can be quite small. It doesn't have to be really deep stuff. Mm -hmm. And all of this is killed. This trust is killed by self-orientation. So I can have all of these things, but if I only waffle on about me, your trust of me will do that. Yeah. Right. So these Money. are the four parts we've got to build up. And Herman HBDI helps us to do that. And it's only when we can tick a box in all four, not that one, tick, yes, mm -hmm. yes, yes, that we have trust. And once we have that okay. trust, conflict is a lot easier because we respect each other's work, respect each other thinking differently. And that helps us that when we do get to those conflicts, they're not. It's a powerful tool to use, actually. Yes, yes. And particularly because it helps us get beyond talking about each other in feedback, which no one really likes, but it helps mm -hmm. us have this tool where I can say, oh, I see why I've given you that presentation. You're rather picky on the images because, mm -hmm. yeah, it's quite a visual thinking style, yeah. whereas the numbers, you're not so good. OK, so let me do the numbers. I'm good at that, for instance, and you mm -hmm. do this part and I'll ex particularly accept your thoughts here. Mm. And then between this, yeah. wouldn't it be great if we can deliver a fantastic PowerPoint presentation because you and I have done this, which is equal to three rather than that equaling a half because we mm -hmm. just don't agree and think we're idiots. Love it. So do you think, for example, when when, when uh, teams are working on PowerPoints, uh, would it be a good, a good idea to have it like uh, using HBDI that each quadrant goes through the presentation and adds their own simultaneously or one after the other and is there a rank like for example should we start with the blue uh, or it depends on the project or yeah um it's a good question let me answer it like this let's start with who we're presenting to okay let's understand what color they are and if we don't know the, their color we'll try and do all four but let's say they're a blue and i'm a red then what i'd really like to do is go and grab my blue colleague having written my presentation then say they're a blue what do you think of this as a blue well i change this right mm -hmm. because we want to talk the language of the person we're pitching to if i'm talking yellow and pitching to a blue it may as well be french and german yeah and that's nuggets for next time <laughs> all right so george any other questions i'm good OK, thank you. So we've got another podcast coming up. We've done a previous podcast on negotiation and teamwork. This one's on conflict. We've got another one coming up next week. And that's our series of four podcasts that we're doing all around Herman Brain Dominance Instrument and helping you to use it better. Indeed. All right. So, George, a big thank you to you. Thank you, Darren. We've been here with the world's stickiest learning and we'll see you next time. See you next time. Take care. Take care.